That's right. Welcome, everybody, to the Machine Room Podcast. Oh, shit. Uh, damn. Uh, shit. All right, there you go. My voice was changed for a second there. My bad. I got a little bit excited. It's a new toy. I like it. Anyways, welcome to the Machine Room Podcast. I am half of your host, Nastradamus. The other half, right over here, Pamela Venus. And we are back. It's Thursday night, and we're in the machine room because we still got to be quarantined. And what better place to quarantine than in the motherfucking machine room? It's got a big door, so you can just close the door and be safe. Exactly, like a big ass, like a vault kind of fucking like bank yes. door with the with that. The one that uh, Superman broke with his ass. Yes. After he got yeah. slammed into it. Yes, and just like that, I want to watch Man of Steel. It's the yes. little things. Cause just it's so great. Just that little, that little piece right there. <laughs> and here in the machine room, we love Man of Steel. And DC. And DC. We love... We're, we're nerds. Up, we're real nerds, I say. We're real nerds. I'm sorry. I'm also eating because I'm hungry. We both... <laughs> we both spent a long day working. Yes, we did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We got to still go out there. We got to still make money. We got to oh still make it in this world. We got to still uh, not get the COVID? No. None of that. Somebody at, Mc, at McDonald's got COVID, and they closed down the whole restaurant. Shit. <laughs> there were, like, no fucking cheeseburgers for you. Uh, that's good. Anyways, those McDonald's have been COVID since we were born. They're bad for you. It is bad, but it's so d- delicious. <laughs> it is. It delicious is. murder. Delicious murder. Didn't somebody try to sue McDonald's a big one? They're always getting sued for stupid shit. I think they got sued for not having real chicken in their chicken nuggets. <laughs> it's, it plays the part. It does fine. I like them. Don't fuck up chicken nuggets for me. It's just people just finding something, you know? Yeah, people just always bitch about stuff. Like, be happy. Be happy that Ben Affleck is coming back as Batman. That makes yes. me happy. Be fucking happy. I sound a little crackly. Why? Why do I sound crackly? You did, but I don't hear anymore. Uh, there's always something with me. My big-ass mixer over here. I hope they know my mixer. I told you to get a new mixer. What about, what about now? now? I'm, I'm, I'm now probably, probably like double. double. I had a bottle of water today. I need to tell my Noom coach. I'm trying that Noom app. The and what? that Noom app. Have you seen commercials for Noom? No. It's like a weight loss app that you put on your phone and they're supposed to like build you up and teach you things like how to eat properly, like balanced diet and all that kind of stuff. Oh, do they do they like talk you down like a drill instructor uh, drill instructor? No, they're really nice. <laughs> they're really nice. The- <laughs> Come on, man. Just one more. Just one more cut. You know what reminds me of? Uh, it was that best friend, and I think uh, Night the Roxbury, the one that it really. Oh yeah, out. the one that wanted to hang out with him that did the sprinkler. Yes. <laughs> I love that movie. That's my dude. Hold on, as I'm trying to find. <laughs> ah, there it is. I love when he has all those uh, energy bars that say different things mm-hmm. it's like I owe you big time <laughs> <laughs> that guy was cool it was like he was in that he was in a scary movie and I know I'm in another movie and then that's it 
Wasn't he? No, he wasn't in that. He was in Freddy vs. Jason. He was? Yeah, he was the cop. Damn, I don't remember Freddy vs. Jason. That movie is awesome. You should definitely watch it again. I should definitely watch it. You know, the only thing I remember from Freddy vs. Jason is the final confrontation where Freddy and Jason, like, on the... I guess, the beach? Is the beach or the lake? And on the... Yeah. On it's the, all next to the lake. Fucking ramp or whatever. They start fighting in one of the cabins and then they end up fighting in front of the... The lake and then they end up... Um, it ends on the dock of the lake. See, that that was the... Like, I don't know if that was the beginning of the crossover kind of movies, but... It was like almost a thing. Like things were gonna keep going. You know, you had that. You had Aliens yeah. versus Predator. And they thought... had done it. They had done crossovers in comics for years. So to have a movie that did it, it was so badass. Mm -hmm. And in both universes, that movie is canon. So mm -hmm. it means that they all do. They uh, they all tie together. So then they wanted to do the same thing with. Army of Darkness and Evil Dead. They wanted to have Freddy versus Jason versus Ash. Yes. And that that never happened. It didn't. It got close though. Like soup like Superman lives kinda close. <laughs> now you just brought that into my mind again. Like, I'm totally disappointed it never happened. Oh dog fight. Here in the machine room, we got dogs. Yeah. You like dice? Oh my god. Shout out to Phantom Knight and 16-bit in our chat room right now. Thank you for coming through. While she goes handle the dogs, yeah. we're going to keep talking about this. There's a comic of Freddy vs. Jason vs. Army of Dar Darkness. It's pretty crazy. Yes. Yeah. And there should be a freaking live action. I know someone who doesn't like Army of Darkness. Like, at all. They, uh, for some reason, they really, hold on, let me do that. All right. For some reason, they really don't like it, and um, I don't get why. You know it's a family member. You're stupid. Hold on a minute. There you go. I'm going to do that. <laughs> but they don't like army of darkness and he's a big evil death fan but don't like army of darkness and i don't understand why at all i don't get it but it is what it is i actually really like army of darkness what about you rachel oh shit are you like what army of darkness because i was talking about how like there's a I know someone who's a big Evil Dead fan, but they despise Army of Darkness. What? Yeah. Army of Darkness is a fucking classic. It's a masterpiece. I don't and get why. And like, it, it seems like his friends doesn't understand why he doesn't like it either. It's like, it is so great. It's so great. And it's the true sequel to Evil Dead. Yeah. That's why I don't, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't. Quite frankly, like Evil Dead, I prefer Evil Dead 2. That's probably blasphemy to people, but that's me. I'm the opposite. Because it's the same fucking movie, they just have less people in the second one. But in the second one, they had Ash actually get down. He gets down in the first one, he just gets his ass beat. <laughs> he just, from what I remember, the first one, he was like mostly like. Running and crying and screaming. There's a lot of that, yes. And a lot of fake blood. A lot of Sam Raimi in it. Yes. What's Sam Raimi up to these days? Making shitty movies. <laughs> I can't remember what the last thing he did. Oh my god. He made that stupid... Take me to hell movie or go to hell or Drag whatever. Drag me to hell. Drag me to hell. Yeah. That's the last so thing I do remember. There he is. Make two, 
two good Superman movies or Spider Man movies. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. And then he just shit his whole career. That's right. He is doing the next Doctor Strange movie. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. That is He's... exciting. Well, those are producer credits. That means nothing to me. <laughs> right? There was the Evil Dead remix, but he just produced them. Yeah. He's going to do World War Three movie. Uh, King Killer Chronicle. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse Madness. He did a TV show called 50 States of Fright. A short called The Black Candola. I don't know what that is. He actually directed one of the Ash vs. the Evil Dead TV show. I still haven't seen that show. It's really good. I'm fucking up. You are fucking up. I am. Because... And they said, too, that that show is canon. Yeah. I don't know how, but still. <laughs> you know what? It works. Fuck it. It's canon. Bruce is in it. Canon. It's canon. I had, like, Bruce Campbell, like, literally in front of me for a long period of time. I geeked inside uh-huh. a lot, but that was about it. You should have hugged him and said you love him. I should have, but I probably would have got tackled. It was at a panel, and he, and it was him and Sam Raimi's brother, who's uh, Ted Raimi, right? Yeah, that's and, everything. Um, they literally just did, like, a game show at that point. Like, the panel didn't even become a panel. It just became, like, a game show. And he'll come out to the crowd, and he'll ask people stuff, and he'll grab someone from the crowd, and then they went up their stage. And then it was real cool. It was a fun time. So one of those, one of those times that Bruce Campbell came out, was literally in front of us in our aisle and just wow. stood there like for the longest as he was talking uh, and then he went up there and I was like oh, that's wow. how close I got to Ash Sam Raimi directed Oz the Great and Powerful that movie bombed so hard he did direct that it didn't suck it was good it was decent I just saw like the beginning of it before they went to Oz and I was like I could watch more of this <laughs> and I never did. Uh, let's see here. I remember when they had us thinking Ash was going to be in Mortal Kombat. That's true. They did. They did. They did have people think he was going to be in the Mortal Kombat game. And he should have. Multiverse is the best way I feel to bring the mutants into the MCU. I'm really... And multiverse is kind of like a little subject that we were just talking before we started this this right. uh, before we started this podcast. Um, Marvel clearly started the whole multiverse. Actually, at the end of Agent of Shield, the f- uh, the season fin- no, well the series finale, they kind of confirmed that there is a multiverse. All the timelines are different. Are that creates a multiverse, and the way to travel through two other multiverses is through the quantum realm, which is what we kind of saw in Endgame. They were just yeah. time traveling, but what they didn't know was that they were creating multiple multiverses. And in mm-hmm. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they also dealt with time travel and confirmed that they just created, they were just in alternate multiverses. So now DC is doing, like me and you, we talked about it. The best way to fix the whole DCEU is Flashpoint. That is the best way to do it. That's exactly what they did on the show, like two or three times. Yeah. You know? It's the best. It's the coolest way. And the recent uh, seasons of the Arrowverse shows, which th- I mean, I don't even know if you call them the Arrowverse now since Arrow is done. But in the recent uh, seasons, they all did the uh, f- um, uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths and yeah. or Final Crisis or whatever. And they just meshed all the universes. Because remember how Supergirl was his own fucking multiverse and all that shit? Yeah. Now, now they're all just one. All the shows are under one. And that's how you do it. So Flashpoint is the best way. And now we're getting news. Before we got news that Michael Keaton was going to show up in Flashpoint, which we Keaton. all jizzed in our pants. Now we're getting word that Batfleck is going to be in the Flashpoint movie. Yes. I jizzed even harder. And I don't know about you guys, but we are fans <laughs> of the Batfleck. I love him. Yes. He didn't suck to us. The warehouse scene is the best thing 
Oh my god. <laughs> I've seen a Batman kicking ass, and I want more of that. I wanted a whole movie of it, but we just got the Twilight Saga douchebag. <laughs> She's judging. I'm optimistic and very hopeful because I don't judge Patterson from the Twilight. He's done other works and shows that he's actually an actor. I've never seen him in anything. I've never seen the Twilight movies. I've never seen anything he's ever done, so I have no reference. <laughs> you have nothing. I need to see the one recently. Okay, he's in the movie Tenant. See, 60 bit over also said he's good. He's in the ne- he's in the movie Tenant with Christopher Nolan that keeps getting pushed and they said like this oh, is yeah. the month. So, I really want to see that. Also, there's a movie called The Lighthouse with just him and Willem Dafoe that people keep... I heard that was good. Yeah, people keep saying it's really, really good. So, I think it's on Amazon Prime. I need to get off my bullshit and I need to watch this freaking movie. Yes. The problem is trying to find movies. Because everything is so divided now. You know, you've got like 50 different fucking apps that have movies and who has it that month and this and that. And a lot of times I end up having to just like rent it or buy it or try to find a bootleg, which I hate to do because I've seen, you know, what it's like behind the scenes. You know, I I was in uh, an episode of Better Call Saul and it blew my mind how many people are behind the camera. Like, just right outside of the frame. There's yep. just fucking people everywhere. So I, I try not to do bootleg stuff because, you know, you you want to buy it or fund it, give them support for what they've done. Yeah, for real. I'm also, like, I know the industry. I know what they go through. And I also work, like, on the set of The Dark Knight. You bootlegging a movie is just total disrespect. And why would you want to watch something in such a lower quality? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I understand people don't like, don't prefer, prefer not to go to the movie theater. Fine. Then wait, I guess. Because what else can you do, right? I also agree with you. Like, there's so many apps, so many streaming services to go find a movie here and there. Like... I would literally have to go searching through Hulu, Netflix, Prime. There's Tubi that's free. There's Crackle yep. that's free as well. But then you have to deal with ads, you know, and stuff like that. I found the best way to, to look for a movie to see what app it's on is use the Google Play Movies app uh-huh. and search for it on there. And it'll tell you what where to watch it. And if it doesn't give you any options for a movie like a or an app to watch it, it'll you know you can rent it or buy it. And renting or buying is not bad. I mean, uh-uh. to rent, I feel like it should just be like three dollars, not no five or anything like that. But <laughs> like two bucks. <laughs> yeah, but it it also depends on how you know, like free. I mean, how new the movie is and whatnot. But getting to this supporting thing, you know, in this day and age, we haven't been having the movie theater experience. You know, we we can't go out there. Actually, theaters are starting to open soon. I believe I just got an email saying that Regal theaters are going to open on the, I think, like this week or next week. Wow. So that's... You know, me, a big uh, movie-going experience, I don't know if I'm, like, ready to just jump into that just yet. Um, And then these movies and these studios need to make some profit, you know? And it's not just the studios, because I know when people think, oh, then, you know, whatever, they got money already. Like, No, you got to understand, just like Rachel said, there's people who work on this. Bill and Ted, yes. (laughs) Bill and Ted 3 is beautiful example because it's going to go in the theater and on demand. Yep. You damn right. If I can't go to the theaters to go see it, you damn right. I'm going to fucking pay for this movie to watch it. Like I, already, I will I already have it on my wish list. You see? Like we're going to support the shit out of Bill and Ted 3 because we want this movie to make a profit. We want to show that Bill and Ted 
is still much loved and, and, and demanded and wanted. And on the Disney side, a lot of people fl flipping over the fact that they're going to finally release Mulan on Disney Plus, but they're going to have you pay extra to watch it. Look, I get it. It's a lot of money, especially if it's just like for one person to pay like 30 bucks to see a movie. But right. in the but with a family or like with friends, it's not exactly a bad deal. But here's the real thing. Mulan is to me and a lot of people, it's a big deal because this is a all Asian cast of a Hollywood movie. You know what I'm saying? Like technically <laughs> it, it uh, technically it, everything's against it, you know, because they always yeah. say like, uh, Asian led movies won't make money and blah, blah, you know, stuff like that. And that's what they said with like uh, Black Panther when it came out. I was like, oh, uh, all black cast and black hero, blah, blah, blah. And you saw the support for that? Did you see the support for Black Panther when it came out? Well, to be fair, there was one British dude, but never mind. Yeah, just the, just that one guy, the token British guy. <laughs> the token British guy. <laughs> you got to have the token British guy in, a, in an all black cast. Yes. But I love that there was so much support for that movie. It's like, yo, don't bootleg this. Do not, you know, illegally watch this. Go out there, support it. And it and it did great. It was highly supported. Everybody went out there. Then I feel like when Mulan was now Mulan's incident and it unfortunately got affected by the freaking COVID-19. And now it's finally getting a, a decision of a release and nobody wants to support it. Nobody yeah. wants to support this all Asian cast of we got some like we got Donnie Yen in this movie, man. And we mm -hmm. got some big names of Asian actors and just the fact that it's an Asian cast of a freaking Mulan. And I don't want to hear the bullshit about like there's no wushu. Like, come on, guys. Like, OK, so there's no wushu. But the movie to me looked great. And I want to see a live action form of Mulan. And I want to support this all Asian cast so we could get more good materials. They're just mad about the Eddie Murphy dragon. They're very <laughs> fucking mad about Eddie Murphy not being there. <laughs> no Eddie Murphy dragon, no movie. It's ridiculous. But anyways, me and my fiance, we're going to totally rent that. And we're going to do a big thing about it. We're going to have our little screen. We're going to watch it like it's in the movie theater because we have a projector. And we're going to invite people and, you know, we're going to make a big deal about it. And that's what I, yeah, yeah that's what I would recommend other people to do. Like, oh, you, you want to see this movie? Don't bootleg it, man. Because that's the thing that sucks when things go digitally or on demand or whatever. It's easily bootlegged. Yep. Don't support it. Support these movies. Support Mulan. Support Bill and Ted. You know, support whatever goes out there, dude. Because... They got to make money, and it's not the studio. We're talking about the people who work behind it. They got to make that money. They're just like, especially like uh, big budget movies, like Marvel movies. How many people actually watch the credits? That is a fuck ton of people. Fuck ton. It's like 20 minutes full of fucking credits. <laughs> I think and everybody's people... watched the credits because the rule is don't leave until the credits. Yeah. <laughs> Except for end, end game. Mm-hmm. You just got a bunch of cursive signatures on the screen. <laughs> I don't know. Support, man. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Shit. Shit. Support. Because, oh, this is the big... Here's the big thing, too. If that becomes successful, it becomes a thing. You know what I'm saying? And even before, but is this a thing? Like live action Disney movies are a big thing right now. No, no, not the fact of live action Disney movies. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's been a thing. Like this is the only live action Disney movie I really wanted was Mulan's. But I'm saying like Mulan's. um the distribution factor of it, which even like before this all happened, like, there was years and years and I think even like ten years ago that there were talks about like movies in theater and movies on demand. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like that whole, like, this is the future or like movies in theater, but like they're selling the movie outside for you to buy, like after you see it or something like that. Like it yeah. was, it was a thought. It was a, a way of the future. Now, if this becomes successful, 
then even after this is over, it could be a thing because they could be like, okay, these people here's your people here are people who want to actually go to the movie, to the movies and experience it there on the big screen with yeah. surround sound, or here's the people that will prefer to just pay this amount and watch it comfortably at home. That would be me. Yeah. Unless it's a premiere, I love going to movie premieres because it's like a party and everybody claps and laughs together and yep. it's fun. Yep. I hate going to movies where everybody's all shh. I'm like, bitch, don't <laughs> shush me. <laughs> that's the that's the shit from the the end of the Simpsons. I'm a same guy. I kind of okay, want. Just, um, me and Sean one time at a movie theater, and then he looked back and saw how big Sean was. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got right behind his head, and we kept going, "Turn around, turn around, say it again, turn around, <laughs> turn around, say it again." And the guy just like froze and fucking wouldn't turn around. And then Were as soon fucking... as the movie was over, he fucking ran away. Why are you fucking with people? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do. It's like say it again. I don't think he saw him. <laughs> Sean is a bad guy. He's like the Hulk. You remind me of a skit from the whitest kids you know or the whitest people you know? Yes. Whitest kids you know. Yeah. I the love skit, that show. The skit from that one, they did the whole Abraham Lincoln and he was yes. talking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> Fat piece of shit. And that's why he got shot. <laughs> he didn't get shot. He beat him, beat his ass to death with a hammer. Oh shit! Don't hit my butt. I that was that. a good show. It didn't last long. No, I think only like five or six seasons. I wish I would have done more. Whoa, whoa. That's more than I expected. It did very well then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it went on it did for a very while. Well. Shit. Yes. If you reach like Where five you seasons, then you you actually succeeded. Um, what do they say? If you can make a hundred episodes, you can be syndicated. That's true. So there you go. All right, we gotta make a hundred episodes of this so we could be syndicated. <laughs> But we are. We're on Google Podcast, iTunes Podcast, or Apple Podcast, and Spotify. That's right. And YouTube, Twitch. Mm-hmm. We're all over the place. We're getting no royalties. None. None. I'm I'm still waiting for either Netflix or HBO or Amazon to fight over our, our freaking video rights. Like they do for right. friends and all that other, the office and shit like that. You know, I'm going to say something and, and people will probably get mad. But I don't think the office is funny. I think you said that before. I have, but every mm. time it's on Comedy Central, like all the time, I'm like, this isn't funny to me. It's clever. I get it. It's the same thing with the, the Big Bang Theory. It's like once you've lived those like with those people or been around them like yeah i get all those jokes and the references and all that actually the only episode of the big bang theory that was funny to me was the one with james earl jones he was hilarious i've seen clips of that yes yeah he was fucking hilarious but the rest of it was me i never i'm i'm with you on the big bang theory like i i just no I just felt like it was disrespectful to tell you the truth. Like that's how, how that's how you see us. Like right? Because I'm lame. No, it's because. Uh, <laughs> uh-uh. I I no. just don't like I like the only person from that group of guys is the one that always wears the hoodie that came from Roseanne. Like he's the only one. Oh yeah. He's the only one that I feel is believable. You know. While the rest it's are just, nerdy. the rest are just too much. But the one dude with the big ass nose, he's actually a very funny guy because he can do impersonations like 
to the T. Oh, uh, yeah, I've heard him. Yeah, he is awesome when impersonated. So if I could just get him doing something where he's impersonating people, <laughs> fan for life. It's the same thing with um, King of the Hill. You know, I grew up in Texas, so I knew how those people were. And yeah, there, there's people like that. But because I lived it, it's not funny to me. Oh, so you didn't like King of the Hill? <laughs> I watch it, but it's not funny. I don't think I've ever laughed on the show once. <sighs> and it's the same thing with Big Bang Theory. Like, I know people just like that or have met people just like that. I've played, you know, the board games and, you know, done the, all the, like we're doing now, the geeky talk and, uh -huh. you know, bringing up references all the time and going to shops and, and, you know, whatever. But so it was like what you said, it feels disrespectful that they pigeonholed people to, that they think that all nerds are like that. Like, you're one of the, you know, like, it's a fucking, uh, sin, uh, what is that show called? Uh, Sex in the City, where everybody's Ugh. like, oh, you're, you're a so-and-so, or, you know, you're this person. People do that with Big Bang Theory. I'm like, don't pigeonhole people into these little groups mm -mm. of types of nerds. There's just nerds. There's geeks. There's whatever. Everybody's different. And that's what we we love about it. And we shouldn't pigeonhole people. So uh, apparently uh, my girl has met people like the Big Bang Theory as well. If we think about everything like that, then we will always be offended. That's true. It's not offensive. It's it's just not entertaining. I... It, like shows with Mexicans. Let's not talk about that. Look, um, <laughs> when I grew up, you know, it was like, oh, you're a nerd, you're a geek, blah, blah, blah. You were made fun of. I like Star Wars. I was made fun of for liking Star Wars and whatnot at that. But I was always proud of who I was and what I liked and what I loved. Then there was this boom in the internet where we had shit like YouTube and Vimeo and all that other stuff, you know, and we got to express ourselves and then you got to find out that there's other people out there just like you. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, they saw how me and my friends are and, and they was like, wait, there's people like me. And then through that over the years after that, as you got older, you met all these other people that grew up like you. And then they're just like, yeah. now we technically like rule the world, you know? And, and you don't feel alone anymore. Now everybody and their mama no. is a fucking geek fan. Everybody loves Marvel. Everybody loves DC. Everybody loves fucking Star Wars. And it's like, yeah, where were you guys back then? But that's the thing. Like <laughs> that Big Bang Theory makes gives this image to me personally. It's like this image that we're these guys. We're these yeah. four specific people. And then there's that one blonde there who represents everybody else looking at them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't like that. No. I you never made fun they... of for that shit. Y'all went to no because you grew up at a time period when it was fine. Like, well, I didn't. I don't want to say I was made fun of for like in the sense that you know I got bullied or whatever. It's like like I found mutuals. Like all my friends I grew up with were mutuals. Well, hey. but it wasn't in. You know, it was like slowly getting in. You know. Yeah, it was one of those things where. You knew there were some people like in your city and stuff like that. But like for me, it was when I started driving and I was able to go further than just like one comic book store I went to all the time. When you could go outside of that, that was when I was like, holy shit, there's more people like me. And, you know, the Internet helped with that, too, because you could talk to people all, all over the world. And it really showed the diversity of like geeky or nerdy people like mm -hmm. there's there's so many different types and and little cliques and things like that but we all come together at conventions and, and things like that or shows like this and we unify in the things that we love opposed to other groups that unify over things they hate you know 
<laughs> Legendary Ross is right that we have gone to cons and there are people like those in Big Bang. And it is true. And it kind of weirds me out. Like, you know, I feel like I'm geeky, but then there's people that are like, oh, they like, they top my geekiness and nerdiness. Yes. And I'm like, whoa, oh, uh, holy shit. We had a kid in middle school that anytime he got mad, he'd speak Klingon. I was like, I'm not that nerdy. <laughs> I don't know. I know like one Klingon word. Let's see, 16 bit says, I remember a girl thinking I was a dork for wearing Transformers shirts in middle school. And then when I got to high school, she was all, I love Transformers when the movies came out. Yup. Exactly. You know who made fun of me for liking Star Wars? Carol. You know who's a big Star Wars fan now? Carol. Carol. So, yeah, take that. Yeah, they exist. And they, I understand that. But still, like, they. They divided like people up into a character, and you're everybody, you're this character, you're that character. No, it's so much more diverse than that. It's insane. And you know, like like what you said, like different levels of nerdy and geeky. I did force Legendary Ross to watch Star Wars because everyone should love the wars, <laughs> you know. And it was a prerequisite, especially, especially the originals. Yeah, it's a prerequisite. You have to I mean, watch Star Wars and like Star Wars because there's no reason. I don't think there's a reason to not like Star Wars unless you watched it and don't like it. If you watched it and you don't like it, that's fine. But people that just shit on it and never seen it, I'm like, you don't know what you're fucking missing. Especially exactly. when you've seen them in the theater and it's all big and huge and mm -hmm. ugh, that's the best. That's the experience. That's the experience that my mm -hmm. brother wanted to to give me so when phantom menace came out and he just literally got me out of school like hey uh, uh xavier uh, you gotta go downstairs your brother's picking you up for a family emergency i'm like what all right and i go down there and, and he just goes like hey man how you doing yeah and then once we're alone he's like hey i'm gonna get you out of here shut up all right i'm gonna take you to go to <laughs> star wars i'm like oh okay He's like, I saw it last night. It's fucking amazing. I'm going to go take you to go see Star Wars. I'm like, all right, cool. Except for Jar Jar and the Pod Races. Uh, no, I love the Pod Races and Legendary, Legendary <clears throat> Ross actually loves Jar Jar. <laughs> what? <laughs> you got to have someone. Oh, my God. I hate. Um, I remember my, uh, one of my mom's friends took me to see The Phantom Menace. And... Before we went to the movie, we went and ate at this Mongolian restaurant. Which, uh, if you're familiar with Mongolian, they don't cook the food very long. Fucking Mongolians! Goddamn <laughs> Mongolians! <laughs> so we were holding, like we were holding it the whole time watching that movie, and just our stomachs were just like, damn! <laughs> I was like, oh my god. So I didn't really get to enjoy it as much as I should have because the food. <laughs> and then yeah. after, like, as soon as the, the, the credits rolled, we both ran to the bathroom and just destroyed. Damn. Destroyed. Damn. But, yeah, once it came out on VHS, I was able to, like, rewatch it and really dissect it and be like, okay, I get this. I, I want to see more. You know what I did with the... When it came to VHS, and I was the, that was that freaking kid. By that time, I was already like probably going into high school, right? Because it was ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, I was about to go into high school. But when that thing came to VHS, I did not want not the normal VHS. I wanted the one that was like this big rectangle box case, and it was the widescreen version of it. Yes. So the whole fucking shit. And I was like, that's the one I want. You opened it up and there was the movie there. Plus like the special like film reel of it or yes. something like that. I was like, I was completely, I, I forced my dad to get me the fucking really good one. And not that bullshit I one. I remember that, but I just got the, the widescreen by itself. Mm-hmm. So then I had that and then I had, I got the other two prequels on DVD. And then I got them again on Blu-ray. Yes. Steel book. You have to. You gotta. Now I'm gonna. I my next. 
venture is to buy the the Skywalker saga on um, for digital uh, viewing, like for Google. So that way it'll be in our library. All together? Yeah, all together. We got like, we have like three of them? No, we have like all the... The new ones. Yeah, the sequels and Solo and Rogue, I think, in there? Yep. There? Yeah, so all the new ones we got in there. And just need the the prequels and the originals. I have access to all that shit because of Disney Plus. So do I. And the Mandalorian. But, Yes. yes. If you don't like the Mandalorian, you can fuck right off. <laughs> Y'all can get the fuck out of here. Y'all watching the I'm Lego just... Holiday Special? The what? What? I didn't know there was one. Is there? An and Lego we don't Holiday talk Sp- about we don't talk about the Star Wars Christmas special, so don't ask. But if you're a Star Wars fan, you have to go through the pro. You have to go through <sighs> the. Viewing initiation, yeah, you have to watch that. It, it's a must, <laughs> oh, it's like torture <laughs> to force yourself to watch that thing. Oh my god, I can't even talk about it. I, I just I get so upset, <laughs> it's so awful. What uh, were they thinking? I didn't show her. That's something you have to watch by yourself. You can't like force people to watch. You have to like, like a gun. You have to like put it down and show it to them. This that, is that. That's how, is how interrogation should happen, though. Oh, oh my god! So you're not gonna tell me who's behind <laughs> the bombings? Okay. Uh, watch do this. we still have that copy of the Star Wars Holiday Special? <gasps> no, no. I'll tell you everything. If their brain doesn't explode. <laughs> no, hold on. No, you gotta see this. You gotta see this. You gotta see this Wookie family. Oh no. my god. No. The lighting's all wrong. It's all wrong. <laughs> there's only shitty cameos. Oh uh, man. To answer Dro, like if there's a Lego holiday special, you know I'm gonna be there. Anything wars. Right now I'm trying to go through the Star Wars Rebels. So I'm watching the first season all over again. Because I don't remember anything, and then watch the rest that I didn't get to watch. Um, no. I want to get through that, and then I know they have Star Wars Resistance as well to check that out. And I'm just waiting for the next season of Mandalorian. And Both of that. I still have not played that game that you got, Fallen Order or whatever Jedi Fallen Order. Oh yeah, I need to play it somewhere. Yeah. I'm only on the train. <laughs> Whatever that is. It's just wherever that is. Yeah, it's not very far. It's near the beginning, but yeah, I'm just, I'm on the train. <laughs> um. God, I had something. You got something. You got something. I had right there. something. It's right there. I sent Pickles. it. Pickles. I know it. It's right there. Come on. What are we talking about? It's right there. Jar Jar. Jar Jar. Don't say Binks. <laughs> Jar Jar. Um, it's right there. Man, I lost it. We lost it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, shut. Good night, everybody. Nice. No, <laughs> That's <laughs> the end of it. Good night. What were we talking about? I don't know, man. It was like all over the place. We're talking about Star Wars, this and that. Uh, before that. How Big Bang Theory represents nerd and nerd culture. Now you're going too far back. I mean, like, just talking about. Oh, shit. Just talking about. All right. Let's see. Star uh, Wars. The digitals of the whole saga. Oh, I remember. Um, the guy that played Jango Fett and did all the voices for the clone troopers is coming to the Mandalorian to play Boba Fett. That's right. So... <laughs> To get Boba would be great. I'm still trying to figure out how Ahsoka Tano is going to fit in there. But bring it. We'll watch that. Bring it. Maybe flashbacks. Maybe not. I don't know. Because if Ahsoka Tano was alive throughout the whole fucking original trilogy, that's fucked up. She should have did something. <laughs> something, yeah. 
Yeah. When didn't she suppo- die uh, in the third one? No. Well, there's there's a deleted scene of her getting her head chopped off. No, that's not her. That's Shakti. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm getting my I people know. mixed they all, up. They all look alike. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, to see. Actually, to see the fate of Osoka Tano during um, Revenge of the Sith, it's the finale of the Clone Wars. Like, the actual oh. finale of the Clone Wars. And that's why I say, like, that last season, the, the season that they finally dropped this year, it's beautiful. Beautifully mixed into Revenge of the Sith. It's the perfect fucking conclusion to the whole Clone Wars saga. And I highly recommend people to watch it. And to watch that. Yeah, it's really like it literally fits in like the last few episodes the last episodes literally fit in within the movie. You know what I'm saying? Oh shit. Like there's moments in the movie and then it cuts into that. Oh damn. Yeah. That's pretty epic. Not 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 actual footage of the movie, but like, you know, they recreate a moment of the movie. Yeah. It'll cut into there. Um that's one that I could cool. one that I could say that's really well well done is there's a moment in the movie where you're seeing Mace Windu, Yoda, Obi Wan, and that other dude I forgot <laughs> that Andy Andy Dick played in the in the parody in the fucking M- MTV Movie Awards. The one with the big cone head. I forgot what his name is. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, that Jedi Master. They're all talking. And they're all having a conversation about what's going on, and then they are showing that, of course, redone in the CGI, and then it just cuts to. Uh, Ahsoka Tano so it's like she walks into them having this conversation with themselves and a hologram you know what I'm saying oh yeah so once you hear that conversation you're like wait I know this part in the movie and then it goes to hers like stuff like that that's really awesome yeah they they really they really put a lot of thought and time into it and it really fits in perfectly so now you know exactly what Ahsoka Tano Where was doing fits in. yeah mm-hmm. during that time period and plus Darth Maul okay. come on guys you gotta get on it it's I love Darth Maul. What are the chances that Mace Windu is still alive? Woo. Unless he can fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Unlimited power. The Force is amazing, though. You saw what Princess Leia did. Had twins. No, Princess Leia. Not. <laughs> She should have though, right? Though, right? She should have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Technically, she should have had twins, because it's genetic. Mm-hmm. In the in the in the comics, she had twins. Yeah, exactly. She had three kids. Two of them were twins, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The right? first two kids. Oh, but then that brings us to that whole rumor and and theory, and some even say confirmation that. George Lucas is getting his hands back into it and they're going to try to retcon everything that happened in the sequels or some shit like that. It just sounds messy. I don't, know. I don't think he was really happy with it like a lot of people and he just rather use his own sources, you know? Right. Then he shouldn't have sold the shit to Disney. <laughs> he shouldn't have. Or he should have but still been behind it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I could see that, but still, like, I think he should have fought for more control in the beginning because then he could have shaped it to what it should have been. But now he was just going to confuse people. I feel like George Lucas, I don't even feel like, because you could tell the kind of person he is. He's just like, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So <laughs> I guess, like, when he sold it and then. They were like, this is what we're going to do it. And he's like, yeah, sure. Whatever. I mean, that seems fine with me. And then it happens. And then later he's like, I'm, I don't know, man. I think I'm going to go change that. You know, like he <laughs> did his own movies. Like, you know, mm, well, you. like how he directs, you know, that's why people acted like they didn't like the people's acting back then. Unless you're Ewan McGregor, yeah. and you give it your all. But he'd be like, yeah, action. Was that good? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's just, just go on. Next scene, lightsabers. Let's go. Damn. Just plain Joe said, last time George Lucas had his hands in something, Mace Windu lost his own hands. <laughs> it's fucked up. 
I think he was tired of it and the Uber fans. He was probably happy when Disney pulled up with all of their zeros on that check. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Getting a fat paycheck like that from Disney and getting promised that your shit's going to get like re-merchandised and put out, you know, again. Like, yeah, any director would have shit their pants for that. Oh, yeah. Didn't he get paid like a billion for all that shit? Oh, yeah. Like a fuck ton of money. Like, he never has to work again. So the news of him wanting to come back and make more movies is like, I think, too little too late. Or maybe this was all his plan, like the long con. Like, oh, they don't like my idea? Okay, here, buy it. All right, you're going to do what? Go ahead. Let's see how they like it. They hate it? Well, guess who's coming to save the fucking day? (laughs) (laughs) Like, there's a clause in the contract that said, okay, if everybody hates these movies, I'll come back and do some more. (laughs) Yep. And then he's like, this time I have a team, and he brings John Favreau and Dave Filoni, who actually know what the fuck they're doing. And then they got their own people who know what the fuck they're doing. And it's like, we're going to save the day, and we're going to save my babies. (laughs) I think that was probably his whole plan from the beginning. So what you're saying is George Lucas is Palpatine. Yes. <laughs> Let's remember that Star Wars is just a reflection of George Lucas through and through everything. Yeah. So he's not Han Solo hanging out with his dog all day. He's <laughs> Palpatine. He's the evil mastermind and he needs to be stopped. <laughs> yep. Call for Papa Palpatine. Plus he, plus he killed uh, Kit Fisto. So that was a dick move. He did kill Kit Fisto. Like nothing. Like just pff, like an like afterthought. Nothing. Like Papatine Papatine versus three Jedi Masters should have been a longer fight. That should have been an epic fight. He should have. He took out two and then just fought Mace Windu, mm-hmm. which they didn't even put much into that fucking fight. It's like the whole pre- like the whole prequels, they just put everything into Darth Maul versus Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon. And then yep. the rest, they toned it down a little bit. <laughs> That's a great fight, though. I love that. It is. It is. It's the best fight. The Darth Maul fight is like the best shit on Earth. Mm-hmm. The first time you saw that Darth Maul had a double lightsaber, like, I just pooped. <laughs> I, it was the most watched trailer probably ever yeah in my life i think i i think i haven't watched the trailer that many times maybe like the matrix reloaded because i killed the fuck out of that movie before i even saw it and that's when i learned like don't watch everything that gets released before a movie but no the phantom menace teaser trailer was the most beautiful like literally people paid to see meet joe black just to see that trailer before it and then walked out (laughs) I think I'd maybe too. Yeah. I like it. I it's seen it. it's uh what's his name? Brad Pitt pretending to be death. Really That's cool concept. Yeah. Did he kill anybody? He's, <clears throat> he's death and he's taking a vacation from being death while he's observing this family and he like kind of takes over. It's really good. Does he kill them? No, he just kills one. He's like, I'm on vacation, guys, so you're lucky. Yeah, exactly. But one day, you're going to meet your maker. And that's when fucking death from Bill and Ted comes out. And I can't wait to see him in part three. Oh, my God. Uh, I don't know if uh, Legendary Ross is still listening or watching. But, uh, honey, we are watching Bill and Ted one and two. I'm getting you prepared. I'm sorry. You have to deal with it. They're they're in the uh, the movie thing. That's right. That's how I know it. Um, itch in my Twitch says Darth Maul carried that movie despite being in there for fifteen minutes. I agree. He was the if main was, attraction. He was like the only character with any agency. Everybody else was just like going with the flow. Mm-hmm. Darth Maul was like, I have orders. I am gonna go and fuck this shit up. <laughs> And killing all these people. <laughs> yep. A new movie to sleep on. She keeps sleeping on my movies, man. <laughs> Stop falling asleep. Women do I love to fall asleep. asleep. She's interested in Judge Dredd, but she's more interested in the newer Judge Dredd than the older Judge Oh, no. Dredd. You got to watch the old one first. It's so good. 
That's what I said. You can't just watch Dread. You gotta see what they did before. They're, they're both great. They're so great. I like the original better than the, the sequel. The 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 Sylvester Stallone one, like how Itchin said Darth Maul carried Phantom Menace, Judge mm-hmm. Dredd was carried by fucking what's his name? God damn it. Armando Sante. Oh my god, totally. That motherfucker. Totally. I can't wait for his scenes. Mm-hmm. And then when they finally come together, I'm like, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they have like the best back and forth dialogue. Like they don't have to fight. They're like the dialogue was so great. That guy. I put... don't know why people shit on that movie. You know how like Raul Julia put his all into being M. Bison? Amanda yes. Sante put his all into being that villain and fucking just dread. It was Rico, right? Yeah. Rico. Yeah, Rico. When he said, law, you know, and his eyes, just, come on, man. You guys are giving me goosebumps, and I want to watch this movie now. And do. Right no, now. No, look it up. That should be I used library. to have it on VHS, but all my VHS tapes are gone. All I got is Dread. I don't got Judge Dread. Well, that should be rectified. <clears throat> Didn't the was, judge the I, the first one had a good uh, a good soundtrack too? And Rob Schneider. <laughs> and Rob, <laughs> which he, I just found I out is without. He, I just found out he's half Filipino. Is he really? Yeah, his mom is Filipino. Mm, that makes sense. So he's just a mess um, of but, everything. Like his kid now, he's married to a Mexican woman. So now his kids are like half Filipino, half Mexican, half Jewish. Just a big melting pot. They're going to be like, uh, uh, what's his name? Philip Diamond Lewis. I know I'm doing something wrong there. Uh, Lou Diamond, Diamond Philip. Diamond. <laughs> yes, I got it. <laughs> nope, that's a new one. Lou, Lou Diamond, no, Philip Diamond Lewis. Philip Diamond Lewis. <laughs> I'm just Diamond like sick of shit. So, Judge Dredd, you can watch it on HBO Max. That's true. Yes, that is true. There you go. HBO Max, (laughs) y'all. You get an A for effort on the name. Thank you. (laughs) I try. I was, like, stringing all of his names together until it fit right. Let's say, let's, 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 let's say. Best Lou Diamond Phillip movie. One, two, three. Young Gun. Hit. What? <laughs> yeah, the big hit. Come on. Young Guns, one and two. Young Guns, yeah, they're good. But the big hit, come on. That Lou Diamond Phillips. Oh, yeah. He's still, he's another person that steals the movie in that. In the big hit, like he's another person you can't wait to see. That's all it was about, man. It was about him. I could have had a movie with just that character. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Like, they totally shouldn't have killed him off because he would. <laughs> they could have done sequels. They could have done. I would. I, I mean, technically, you could have done prequel. There you go. You could definitely done a prequel. Not now. They're old as hell. So. Because mad. Uh, fuck. I'm gonna fuck it up. What does he say? I forgot. Uh-huh. Mad Jack and Stacey that cream. There, there you, you go. go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me none of that n- what n- little nin bullshit or whatever the fuck he says. Lim Lionelin. Nylon bullshit. Oh, don't give me no goddamn aloe vera bullshit. How the <laughs> fuck? Get it straight. <laughs> <laughs> the big Amana Sante high he looks like Grimlord before he transformed. He does. And Grimlord is from uh from VR Troopers. There you go. Amana Sante, whatever happened to him? He like he there was this movie where it was a he parody was, of noir films. He was very funny in that. He was in um American Gangster with, with uh, um, Denzel Washington. Was he? Yeah. Mm. He played one of the, like the Italian families. 
think the head of one of the Italian families. There he is. Armando Santa. He that he had that. <laughs> I'm sorry, because I look him up, and then the pictures of him is like, he's basically doing the Zoolander look the whole time, you know? <laughs> like That guy can do whatever he wants. He can do no wrong. He was killing it. That guy's 70 years old now. Oh, my God. Well, how mm. how old is Sylvester Stallone? He's got to be up there, too. Yeah, he's got to. No. No. I think the last thing he did, according to this, 20, 2019, there was a movie called General. He did some stuff. In, yeah, he's been doing stuff, but I haven't even seen him. Does that say if he's done any Broadway? Uh, let's see, television series, Golden Globes, Screen Actors Guild. No, I don't see anything about Broadway. Well, let me see. 74. Career. I remember Mambo Kings. Yeah, I remember Mambo Kings. That was my yep. own shit. NCIS? He was an NCIS. Uh, maybe. Every, everybody's been an NCIS. <laughs> it's been NCIS. We haven't. Every... What the fuck? I could be. You don't know. Well, you could be there? Could be a, a dead body. I'll be a dead body in NCIS. Just lay there and get paid for it all day. <laughs> <laughs> I think I could pull it off. Don't breathe. <gasps> Cut. Breathe. <sighs> But, but, yeah, go ahead. Go it's ahead. that time. Yeah, I was going to say, but let's not all be dead bodies anytime soon. And let's survive the world today. Let's all be good to each other. Let's fight racism. Let's fight the COVID. Let's uh, save the post office. All that other bullshit that's going on. And uh, let's all uh, watch Bill and Ted 1 and 2 and get ready for Bill and Ted 3. <coughs> and Next pay your mom week. some rent. And let's all support Mulan when it comes out. Yes. Even go. without the Eddie Murphy dragon. Even without the Eddie Murphy dragon. Let's all support it. I yep. am Nastradamus. And this is the lovely Hammer of Venus. And With this brown is... hair. Oh, shit. Am I pointing the wrong way? No, you did. Okay. I just was putting out there that my hair is no longer red. Oh, that's right. It's, getting, it's, it's losing its redness. It's brown. I dyed it brown. Oh, shit. Well, there you go. The brown hammer of Venus. The brown. <laughs> <laughs> and you have just been chilling with us in the Machine Room podcast. We miss you, and we're glad you were here. Itchin, Dro, 16-Bit, Phantom, and the lovely legendary Ross. I want to... Uh, uh, fuck, I don't know words. Uh, good night, uh, and if I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. All right, everybody. <laughs> I want to see the Truman Show now. Yeah. Peace out. It probably was on Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> Dro said he probably was on Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> oh, okay. That one tonight. That won it. I probably was on the Wu Tang Clan. He's not <laughs> lying. <laughs>